I want to do an example of a basic physics problem calculating the average velocity of a triathlon. It's going to be a basic problem, but it'll get at some important concepts in physics. It'll t practice working with the definition of velocity, and it'll practice taking a big problem, break it down into pieces to solve it. Both of those are important skills for doing physics, so it's a good place to start. In particular, I'm going to talk about a triathlete who is going to be doing a standard triathlon. They're going to swim three quarters of a kilometer, they're going to bike 20 kilometers, and they're going to run five kilometers. And this particular triathlete happens to average three kilometers per hour swimming, 30 kilometers per hour biking, and 10 kilometers per hour running. So our question is, what is the average velocity overall, ignoring transition times between the events and all that sort of business, just average overall velocity for this triathlete. Now before I start, I always like to draw a picture. Almost every physics problem I do, I start with some kind of illustration, some kind of picture to show what's going on. So here is my triathlete, and she's all getting ready to go. Uh, we have, not to scale, uh, we have the swimming section here. We have the biking section here. And we have the running section here. So swim, bike, and run are those three segments. And what we want to do, we want to find the average velocity overall. Well, I know the definition of average velocity. I know that V average is equal to change in position divided by change in time, delta x over delta t. Now, delta x and delta t here are the total change in position for the whole trip and the total change in time for the whole trip. So in particular, we're going to need to add up delta x for each one of these pieces. We know I have here a delta x swim, a delta x bike, and a delta x run for all of these pieces. And we know we're going to have a time it takes. There's going to be some delta t for swim, the time it takes to swim. There's going to be a delta t for the bike. And there's going to be a delta t for the run. And all those are going to fit together. They're all going to go, those are all the pieces we need to add up all the delta x's to be our total delta x, and to add up all the delta t's to be our total delta t. So we're going to take the big problem, we're going to break it into these three pieces, and solve each one separately. Let's start with the swim. We're going to swim 0.75 kilometers at 3 kilometers per hour. Well, let's look at that. Uh, swimming that speed, uh, if I do that calculation, I know that 3 kilometers per hour is, in fact, its own little V average for the swim. So V swim is equal to, what is it? It's going to be delta X swim divided by delta T swim, right? That's, our, that's the definition of velocity, and our, we know our average velocity for the swim is this. So delta X swim, I already know. That's 0 0.75 kilometers divided by this unknown delta t swim. Yeah, I don't know what that is. So uh, that I've got to figure out. But I know that's going to be equal to 3.0 and kilometers per hour. I'm going to write out as kilometers per hour. So I want to figure out this unknown. I want to figure out this unknown delta t swim. To do that, I can either do it symbolically, write down the equation I need and plug things in there, or I can do it directly using these numbers. Uh, I'll show you both ways really quick, just to give you a gist of how we could do it. If I just use the numbers, I'll just set these two things equal. It looks like I need to multiply both sides by delta t swim to get it out of the denominator over here. And I need to divide both sides by 3 kilometers per hour to get that away. If I do that, uh, this will tell me then that 0 0.75 kilometers divided by 3.0 kilometers per hour has to equal delta t swim. That's just adding the, dividing those out, rearranging to solve for delta t swim, to solve for my unknown. Uh, I've done that. Hey, I can notice right away that kilometers in the numerator and the denominator cancel out. That's good. I can also notice, I always pay attention to units in every step. This is crucial for error checking and all sorts of other things. I also notice that if I multiply by one hour divided by one hour, 
if I just multiply by that, it's multiplying by 1 because it's something divided by itself, that the hours in the denominator will cancel out, and I'm left with just hours on the left. That's good. That's giving me actually something in hours, an answer in hours. And if I do this, 0.75 divided by 3.0, uh, when I did that, uh, 0.75 over 3.0, I get... Uh, I get 0 0.25 hours, or a quarter hour. That's my delta T for the swim part. So I can go ahead and put these answers down here. I know my delta X swim was 0 0.75 kilometers, and my delta T swim was 0 0.25 uh, hours. So I've got those values in here. I guess probably I should have had left more space, shouldn't I? Um, OK, I've got those values done. If I had done this symbolically, same process would have worked. I just would have started with this equation. I would have solved this equation first to say, uh, well, why would I do it? Why, instead of doing it for the swim, why would I do it symbolically for the bike one first and then and see where that takes me? For the bike one, I know that v bike equals delta x bike divided by delta t bike. So solving symbolically for the unknown delta t bike, if I know that's the one that's unknown, then I multiply both sides by delta t bike, divide both sides by v bike, and I'll get delta t bike equals delta x bike divided by v bike. I've gotten to an answer for delta t for my unknown in terms of symbols for known quantities, and in that last step, I'll plug things in. This is pretty similar in the simple case, but in a more complicated problem, it can be, it's a very different experience to do it symbolically than numerically. So I do this, delta x bike was 20 kilometers divided by 30 kilometers per hour, the units are going to work out the same way they did before, right? I'm going to have the kilometers cancel out top and bottom. The hours uh, will come out to be hours on top. That's just two-thirds of an hour, or, you know, 0 0.667, sort of into an average round to three decimal places. So got that. That's my VB. Uh, so or the, that's my delta TB for the bike stage. So my delta X bike was 20 kilometers, and my delta T bike was 0 0.6667 hours. Okay, however many, however many significant digits I want to keep, I've got my delta T for that. And finally, for the run, I can do the same thing. Hey, guess what? Since I did this symbolically, I can just cancel. I, I, I can just rewrite delta T run is going to look like delta X run over v run. I know it's going to be the same shape of the equation. I can skip a step. My run is 5.0 kilometers divided by my v was 10 kilometers per hour. And hey, that comes out to half an hour. Exactly, half an hour for these numbers. So there, I've got my delta x was 5.0 kilometers and my delta t was 0 0.5 hours. There I have those numbers. The great news is now I've filled in all the unknowns, all the pieces I needed to know for my three stages of this piece. I broke this into three pieces. I figured out each one separately using equations. And now I can put them back together. Uh, we've used up all this, so I'm just going to erase this to make some space on the board. And we can put this all back together. Let's see how it works. To put it together, well, my delta x total is going to be the sum of delta x for the swim plus delta x for the bike plus delta x for the run. So that's going to be 0 0.75 kilometers plus 20 kilometers plus 5 kilometers. And so I'll get 25 0.75 kilometers. In my heart, I'm wanting to round that off to 26 or something because of significant digits, but uh, I've got that. Sorry for the tap there. I was losing screensaver or something. 
Uh, so I've got this, uh, and my delta t is going to be the same idea. It's going to be delta t swim plus delta t bike plus delta t run, and that's going to come out to be um, my delta t's. I have my quarter hour plus my two thirds of an hour. Six, 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 seven, plus my 0 0.5, my half an hour. And when I add all that up, it uh, looks like it comes out to be something one and a half. So I added this up earlier so I wouldn't have to do it in front of you. Uh, 1.4166, 1 1.4167 hours, roughly, uh, averaging, rounding to that number of decimal places. So, okay, that's my delta x, that, delta x that's my delta t. I've tried to keep extra decimal places here in several places because I don't want to round off until my very last step. But now we're to the very last step, aren't we? Now I can say that V average then, my average velocity that I'm looking for, V average is going to be equal to delta x, 25.75 kilometers, divided by delta t, 1.4167 hours, and Again, well, I guess I can, now I can finally do some, some rounding off to the right number of sig figs. When I do this, when I did that calculation earlier, I came up with uh, 18.176 kilometers per hour, which I can round off to about 18.2 kilometers per hour. And that will be the answer I'll come up with for this problem. I've kept to three sig figs there. Uh, there are probably significant figure rules that I could use to be more precise on exactly how much to trust this, but rounding to three sig figs is usually going to be pretty safe for the problems we're going to do in introductory physics. So I'm just going to keep it like that. If you want to do really good stuff, watch my videos on uncertainty and measurement. That, that's the way to go to do this for real. So the average, I've got this 18 kilometers per hour. Looking at it, it's actually closest to the bike, uh, to the bike speed, to the bike velocity. And I guess that makes sense because the bike was going a lot longer than the others were. It was that the, the bike was going for two thirds of an hour, whereas the run was only half an hour. And so 18.2, I guess it's between the bike speed and the, the run speed. It's somewhere in between. So yeah, it seems plausible to me. It's, it's less than the bike speed, but faster than the run speed, the swim, you know, even a lower contribution. So OK, there we have it. That's our average velocity for this triathlon. The one other thing I want to do to take just a minute to do this, I want to talk about how to uh, how to visualize this as a graph. And just to do that, mm, okay, you know, these intermediate calculations up here can go again. I'll put a graph up in this corner. It'll be great. We'll put that up here. So I'm going to put some axes on a graph. Here's, a, here's my time here and x here. X will be in kilometers, and time will be in hours. And let's see, let me do this in, uh, this is a quarter hour, a half, three quarters, one, one and a quarter, one and a half. So those are 15 minute increments in time. And position, let's go 25 kilometers, five, 10, 15, 20, 25 kilometers. There, there are some axes to draw this on. Let me just draw up here what our story looks like because we've got all these pieces. The first piece, we want a delta x of 0.75 kilometers, less than one, in a quarter of an hour. So a quarter of an hour, 0.75 kilometers is gonna be about here. So there is my first step going along there. Next. I go 20 additional kilometers in two-thirds of an hour, 40 minutes. So uh, 20 kilometers more is going to be, uh, so 5, 10, 15, 20, and a tiny bit more. So it's going to be at this level. And four, 15, 30, 40 minutes is going to be here, basically. So I'm going between these. I want to go about here. No, I missed. Okay. Go watch where you're going. There we go. This is my, so this was my swim, this is my biking, and then the run was five more kilometers and half an hour. 
So my half an hour, um, 5, 20, 30, about there. And my five additional kilometers gets me up to here. So here's my run. Okay, so those are my three pieces. You can see how they, sh how they look on the graph. The swim is a very, very flat looking thing because its velocity is very low. The bike is much steeper because it's got much higher velocity and the run is in between the two. It's, a, it's flatter but not too flat for that last segment. And just to show you how we can visualize on this, our, our final answer, our V average would be whatever it took to go from the initial point to the final point going straight there, just going, averaging over, going constant velocity. And hey, I can draw that right now. I'll just take a straight edge here and connect those points. Let's see how badly I do. Okay. So there we have, this is the average velocity. Someone going at average velocity through the whole thing would manage to go faster than the swim, get caught up, but the bike would catch up and pass, and then they'd meet at the end. That's a visualization of this same story. So we've now seen three different representations of the story. Once as a picture with some labels, once as a, uh, a set of equations that finally led us to a v-average, and once as a graph where we can visualize things over the motion over time. All of them are useful, and all of this will be good practice for doing physics.